Um, great seeing everyone, and I'm just going to share with you a, a Gemara, and then just, uh, I want to learn a Gemara with you. A Gemara Sekhs Rosh Hashanah, a very famous Gemara, an important Gemara, and perhaps a highlight a point or two, and, uh, and see where this, uh, this takes us. So the Gemara is on that Chavav, and the Gemara addresses a Mishnah that says that you're allowed to use any kind of shofar as your shofar on Rosh Hashanah, Chutz Michel Para. You cannot use a sulfur of a, of a cow. And the commissioner doesn't explain why. And the Gemara really struggles to figure out why. And then the Gemara comes up with a possibility. It says, Lufisha ein kategar nasasanegar. We don't want to go ahead and bring up a para, which reminds everyone of the Egel Hazav. How can we go ahead and use that on Rosh Hashanah? And therefore, no go. It's a no go on Rosh Hashanah to use a sulfur so para. So the Gemara asks the following question. What about Vahika Dam Par? One of the things that we do in the Avoda on Yom Kippur is we'll use the Dam of a Par. So once we're doing Avoda with a Dam of a Par, which once again is Egel Hazov, is the Egel, so how is that, how is that not also a problem? So we're going to give the answer. How will the Istani Istani? Yeah, a Par, that was, reminds us of the Egel Hazov. That's going to be reminiscent of that very sad moment in Jewish history. But once it's already in the form of blood, I can't tell the difference between the blood of a par, the blood of a sa'ir. It's all blood, it's changed. And once it's changed, that's no longer a problem. And the Gemara suggests a number of other questions. One of the questions that the Gemara brings up is Baha'ika, big day Zahav, the Kohen Gadol, on Yom Kippur, wears gold garments. Gold garments is reminiscent of Egel Hazahov. So how can he do that? So the Gemara says, ah, that's not a problem because this issue of Ein Kategor Nasa Sanegar, not bringing in your prosecutor when you need a defense. So there the Gemara tells us that's only an issue when you're in the middle of the Kodesh Kadash. And since the Kohen God on Yom Kippur, he does not wear gold garments in the Kodesh Kadash. He only wears big day lavan in Kodesh Kadash. The gold garments is outside in the regular Azar, the base I make this, not in the Kodesh Kadashim. So the issue is only, is only inside the Kodesh Kadashim. So let's just quickly review. The Gemara wants to know, maybe you can't use a Shofar Shopara because Ein Kategor Nas Zanegar. I, what about Dampar? Dampar is not a problem because it underwent the change. What about Big Day Zahav? Now this issue of Ein Kategor Nas Zanegar is only a problem in the base I make this in the Kodesh Kadashim. Not so when you're outside the Kodesh Kadashim and the Kohen Gadol only wore those garments of the big day Zahav, that was only outside, not inside. So now the Gemara says the obvious question. So far, is outside the Beis Amikdash. It's in every single shul in the world. It has nothing to do with Kodesh Kadashim. So the Gemara says, Ba'ika, what about Shofar? Shofar is Nami Bachutsu. It's outside the Beis Hamikdash. It's certainly outside the Kodesh Kadashim. What are we worried about when it comes to when it comes to Shofar Shel Para? And here the Gemara gives an incredible, incredible answer, and it's 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 life changing if you really reflect on it. The Gemara says, "Well, Shofar Kevan Delizikaron Hu, since the Shofar is a remembrance, is to remember our Tfilos uh, in front of Hashem. It is Kibifnim Dami. It's as if." You're in the Kodesh Kadashim. And what this Gemara seems to indicate is that a radical idea, a radical idea, but a meaningful idea, a fundamental idea, and something that in a week or so's time, a week and a couple, in a day, we should be really thinking about deeply. Is when we are hearing the Shofar on Rosh Hashanah, the Gemara is telling you that you are in the, uh, in the Beis HaMikdash, but not just in the Beis HaMikdash. You're in the Kodesh Kadashim. And therefore, since you're in that place, you're connected to Hashem, there is no room for any duplicity, anything that's going to remind us of the Egel. So there's anything that reminds us of any of our stains, there's nothing to do. It doesn't belong there because we are listening to the shofar as if we are in the Kodesh Kadash. And that's, that's an unbelievable idea, an unbelievable thing to think about, just to reflect upon. And there are other ramifications to this halakha. Uh, I'll just mention a few. Um, and uh, again, another interesting Gemara. The Gemara is found in Masechus Rosh Hashanah Dab Tezayin. And here the Gemara says a Mishnah that we're all quite familiar with. The Mishnah tells us that the world is going to be judged at four different times. 
on Pesach, we're judged for Tvua. On Shavuot, we're judged on the Peros, Ha'ilon. Rosh Hashanah, every individual is judged by Hashem. And the Gemara identifies these various times in the year. And Tu Bishvat, we're also, we're, I'm sorry, on Sukkot, we're judged for water. So that's four different times of the year that we get judged on different things. And the Gemara says that we parallel these days of judgment in the following way. The Gemara says, we bring, we bring the carbon Ha'omer on Pesach. And the Gemara says, why do you bring the barley, the, the carbon Ha'omer on Pesach? Because we're judged on Tvua. So you bring a carbon of Tvua because that's the time of year that we're judged on Tvua. And then the Gemara says, so, and, that, and we should have a bracha on the Tvua for that year. And the Gemara then says, you bring the carbon Shtei Halechem on Shvuas because we're going to be judged on Shvuas on the Peros Ha'ilon. So bring this wheat, which is like a pre of the tree, and bring that on Shvuas and we'll have a favorable judgment of Peros for that year. Then the Gemara says, and on Sukkot, we do the Nisa Hamayin. We do the Avoda of Hoshana Rabbah, of water, the water libations, so that we should have a blessing for water on that day of judgment. And then the Gemara says, and what's the last special day? The last special day is Rosh Hashanah. And you can say it in front of Hashem, Malchios Zichronos Veshofaros. You're going to anoint Hashem as king. And how are you going to do so? Bameh Bashofar, with the shofar. Now, you have four special days that we're bringing special karbonos. We're bringing a karbon on Pesach, the karbon ha'omer for the tzvua. We're bringing on Aseres, a shteha lechem, the bread offering for the Peres ha'ilam. We're bringing the nisu haman, the water offering, because of the blessing that we should have for water for that year. Everything, everything here is based on mikdash. Everything here is karbonos. And then every Jew is going to stand in front of Hashem, Kivnei Maron. And how are we going to do that? We're going to be Mamach Hashem with a shofar. Where is the Beis HaMikdash? Everything else is Beis HaMikdash. Where is the Beis HaMikdash? And the answer is, when you are listening to the shofar, whether it's in the five towns, whether it's in Teaneck, whether it's in Elizabeth, whether it's in Riverdale, whether it's in Brooklyn, whether it's in Atlanta, wherever you might be, in Manhattan, in in, it doesn't make a difference. In Washington Heights, wherever you're going to be listening to the shofar, the shofar carries us into the Makam HaMikdash. That's what the Gemara is telling us, and that's what this Gemara says as well. In fact, the Ramah writes in Shulchanah, Simen Tuf, Kuf, Pei Dalid, that there are places, Yesh Makomos, that Shinoakim Likros HaTokeya Miminyan HaChamish HaOl Masefer Torah, that the Minigid, that the person who lanes should be the Baal Tokeh. The Baal Tokeh should also be doing the Kriyat HaTorah. And the Vilna Gon makes a comment, just a one-line comment, a classic Vilna Gon. He says, Dugma, an example, Kohen Gado, the Yom HaKippur. Just like the Gemara Masechus Yuma tells us, who does the Kriyat HaTorah? Who lanes on Yom Kippur? It's the Kohen Gado who lanes on Yom Kippur. He's doing all the Avodah. He's with Nai Vilisnim. He's in the Kodesh Kadashim. He's doing the Kriyat HaTorah in the same exact sense that Baal Tokeya says the Ramah should do the Kriyat HaTorah because, because he's the Kohen Gadol. He's the Kohen Gadol. And in fact, Shomea Kaone, we are all the Kohanim Gadol. We're all in the Beis HaMikdash at that point in time. Rav Kook, Rav, you did mention Rav Kook. I'll mention Rav Kook too, was once curious about the following question. Why is there no mitzvah of Aliyah Laregel? Aliyah Larega on Rosh Hashanah. I know it's not one of the Regalim, but why not? We go up on Sukkot. We go up on Pesach. We go up on Shavuot. Why don't we go on the Yom of Rosh Hashanah, go to the Beis HaMikdash? And the Ger Rebbe answered Rav Kook, and he said, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because you're already in the Beis HaMikdash. When you're in Brooklyn and Teaneck and everywhere else, you're in the Beis HaMikdash. You don't have to go up Aliyah Larega because the shofar carries you to that place. That's exactly where the shofar brings us. We are kviyachal in the base of with naiv with him. That's why in kategor nasa sanega. A last point I want to make on this uh, on this issue is the following: is as we get ready for Rosh Hashanah, and it's not that far away. So I don't know about you, but I know about me. I'm never ready for Rosh Hashanah. It's the beginning of the yeshiva year. It's the beginning of the school year. And we're very, very busy. 
on going to the beach uh, during Elul, going on a teal during Elul, acclimating new guys to Yeshiva during Elul, doing all the non-Elul things. You know, it's the end of the year, but for so many of us, it's the beginning of the year. And it's hard. It's really, really hard to get ready for Rosh Hashanah in the proper way. And on the other hand, we're about to enter. In a week's time, we're entering into via the sofa into the Kodesh Kadash. How do we go ahead and do so? We're, we're, uh, so the Bali Musa point out, back to that Gemara. The Gemara says, Ein Kateger Nasus Anegar is relevant to the shofar, for sure. That's why we can't use a shofar shofara. But the Gemara says, what about the Dam of the Paran Yom Kippur? And the Gemara tells us, Dam of the Paran Yom Kippur, that's okay. Because it's Dam, it's not the Par. And the language of the Gemara is, Hol the Ishtani, Ishtani. It's undergone a change. Once it's transformed, it's undergone a change, even though the para was tainted by this reminiscence of the Egel Hazav, but not the blood. The blood is new. The blood has changed. It's not para. Blood is not para. And right, the Balea Mustik, as we get ready for Rosh Hashanah. So one of the cures, one of the things we should be thinking about and looking at is if we're tainted, with whatever sins, whatever virus we might have plaguing us, and we have not given it the proper focus. But as we get ready for the Yom Hadid, as we get ready to walk into Kodesh Kadosh, so ho will the istini, istini. If we've made a change, if we've undergone through a process of even a, even a little bit of chuva, a small amount of chuva to go ahead and make ourselves a little bit different than we were yesterday, a little bit different than we were a week ago, a little bit different than we were a month ago. Just give it that time. It's hard. It's very hard during L. New school year, new things going on. It's a very hard time to really give it proper focus. But if you have the ability to go ahead and a little shift in perspective, will the istini, istini. Once I'm changed, I'm no longer the para. I'm now dam para. I'm still coming from a para, but I'm, I've undergone that change. That becomes, makes all the difference in the world. And that's what the Gemara tells us to have that sense of, uh, of that shift. And then uh, there's no longer a taint of Ein Kateg or Nasi Sanega. So I guess my closing message here, first of all, once again, I'll echo, it's amazing to see everyone. Um, but I think uh, one of the things that I think about, and I also, I, I get very, I happen to have another job in Yeshiva. I have no one who you know, calls out and is the Makri for Tzkiya Shofar. Sometimes I'm jealous of everyone who just gets to listen to the Shofar without being any, any other distraction. But no. That when you're hearing shofar, the shofar is carrying, it's not just a sound it's carrying, it's carrying us into a very, very unique place. It's carrying us into the Kodesh Kadosh. And that's a very special place. The Kon Gadol only goes there once a year. Well, all of Klal Yisrael, during the time to care shofar, goes there every single year on Rosh Hashanah. En Katego Nas Tanegar Kilisnim Dami. We're literally in front of Hashem. What the shofar is, it's a silent tefillah. It's a tefillah without words. It's the purest of tefillah. It's a tefillah of just sound, where you can inject that sound with whatever your thoughts are, whatever your tefillahs are, listening to the sound and just being carried into the makam mikdash with that sound. That's really what the shofar is supposed to bring us to. I think that's what these gemaras seem to indicate. And, uh, and that's our challenge and that's our opportunity is to take full advantage of this very, very unique mitzvah, the mitzvah of Tzkiya Shofar, the mitzvah Doraisa of Tzkiya Shofar, that brings us with Nai Nim into the Kodesh Kadashim Mamash. I want to wish everyone a fantastic, fantastic week of Slichos because we get a week which uh, Slichos is tough, but at the same time, it's a great time to repair a little bit of Ho of the Ishtani Ishtani, making necessary little shifts that will enable us to properly be positioned to enter into Kodesh Kadashim on Rosh Hashanah itself. Have a wonderful Yontif and Exiva the Chasima Tova. Okay. I think that's a handoff to me. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. We're going to assume yes. Great. Good to see you all. Um, yes, we hear you. Oh, Gavald of Hanani is here. That's all that matters. Um, okay, Rabbi Yisai, um, good to see you all. I just wanted to share with you uh, something that popped into my mind actually last night during Slichas. 
I'm sure you're all tired from slichas. Um, but, you know, sometimes new thoughts come into mind every time you do the same thing again. We start off the slichas, and we're going to be doing this for the next week, with the paragraph of Lecha Hashem Atzdaka. Right? We say Ashrei, and then we have this long, long section, Lecha Hashem Atzdaka, and then Shomei Tfila, long, 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 and then eventually they get to So if you're in Mavaseret, you sing that. If you're back in America at some minute in the morning, I'll just zip through it, wherever it is, and then you'll get onto the juicier stuff, the part that we say back and forth, Hashem, Hashem, Yud Gilmidas, all the exciting stuff. So our tendency is to overlook that section, and kind of it's long, so we kind of got to zip through it. So I'll tell you my thought that I had last night. Starts out great. The Hashem Atzdaka. Hashem, you're right. Lanu Boshes upon him. We're embarrassed. How can we stand in front of you? Very tshuva oriented. Sounds right. Then the next paragraph starts, Shomea Tfila. Right? Next paragraph. And there's some strange things. We don't seem to talk about how bad we are, how embarrassed we are. We actually seem to be praising Kadush Baruch Hu. We talk about Boshar of Besoda, Chatzeros of Besihila, that we want to come to praise Hashem. In the in in the base of Mikdash, Romu Hashem Elokeinu, kind of sounds like other davening that we're familiar with, right? Maybe Friday night davening, Luchuner Ran Al Hashem, the real Tzri Yishenu. That sounds familiar, right? We say that in this paragraph, opening up Slichas. What exactly are we doing over here? We're we're praising Hashem, we're thanking Hashem, Asher Mi Kel Ba Shemay Muvaretz, who is so powerful. That can do all the wonders that you do. What does this have to do with tshuva? And it continues over and over and over again, where we are praising Hashem for His greatness, for the chesed that He does with us. What does it have to do with anything? It's it's very very long. Again again we repeat it over and over. God Allah Hashem ki God Allah it flows. You do wonders. What is this all about? What does this have to do? With slich, it seems to be totally irrelevant. So there is a Gemara, th- that's one question. There's Gemara in Megillah, which relates to what we did on Shabbos, what we learned. The Gemara in Megillah, Lamed Aleph, says that we always read the Klolos, the Tochacha, of Kisavo close to Rosh Hashanah. And it says, Tich Shana V'Kilo Seha. We read the Tochacha of Kisavo, right before Rosh Hashanah, the year should be over and all the curses of the year, all the clothes should be gone and we can have a good year. Yeah. What exactly does that mean? It's a magic trick. You send to the Balkore, he reads the Tochacha, all the terrible stuff. Okay, we got that out of the way. Now we're ready for a new year. Seems a little odd. What exactly does that Gemara in Megillah mean? What does our calendar mean that we have the Tochacha right before Rosh Hashanah? And not by accident. In that Tochacha, very famously, and this I'm sure you've heard a lot of Divrei Torah about, probably the most famous Pasuk is the Pasuk which gives the reason for the Tochacha, and it's quite shocking. The reason that the Torah gives for the terrible punishments which befall Klal Yisrael, which have befallen Klal Yisrael Yisrael historically, it's because you didn't serve Hashem with joy, with happiness. Merov kol. Merov kol means we have a lot. Okay, so we're taken to task for not serving Hashem with joy, with happiness. So we should all become nanachs and jump up on the top of a van and dance around the whole day. Is that what it means? That doesn't mean that. that that's not what it means. So what exactly is this stinging rebuke of the Torah that... We're not happy enough. We don't serve Hashem with happiness, Merov Kol. So the answer, of course, is not just jumping around happy, but the answer is is in that end of the puzzle, Merov Kol, that when we are blessed with tremendous goodness, that has to translate into our Avodos Hashem. That Rov Kol has to result in serving Hashem b'simcha. Yes, we have to want to do work and we have to be excited because we have been given so much. And if we don't do that, that's we're taken to task for that. 
That's the tremendous violation to just take all the gifts from Hashem, but give nothing back. And the truth is, you see this theme in the beginning of Parshas Kisavo itself, right? How does Parshas Kisavo begin? With the mitzvah of Mikra Bikurim, right? Kisavo, all right, when you come in there, it's Israel. So what are you commanded to do, right? Mereshis, you take Mereshis, you take your Bikurim, the first fruits, and you bring it to the base of the But you don't only bring your first fruits, which that itself is an expression of thanking Hashem. But we also do mikra bikurim. We say, you come to the coin and you say, I've come to Eretz Yisrael, Aram Avi. We thank Hashem for saving our ancestor Yaakov Avinu from Lava. The theme that connects bikurim, the beginning of the parasha, tochacha, the end of the parasha, is the same thing. That theme is hakara satov. Hakara satov, thanking a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Not just thanking. Hakara satov means Lahakir, to recognize the goodness that we receive from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that is what Mikra Bikurim is a positive example of. We bring our first fruits and we say, Hashem, it's all you. It's all you. You gave this to us. And on the flip side, on the negative side of that coin, is if we don't recognize that, if we have the role of call, but we don't express that with joy to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then we're taken to task and Rahman Litzlan, we have the Klalos of the Tochacha. It all revolves around that same theme of Akar Satov. It's all about Akar Satov. We have to have Akar Satov as the most basic foundation of our Avodah Hashem. That is the Esod of Avodah Hashem. Being makir, recognizing everything that we've received from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and then giving back. So it occurred to me that this is really what's happening in Slichas as well. The first step, let me go back to the Gemara and Megillah first. The Gemara and Megillah says, Tichle Shana Vekil we end the year, we get rid of all the clothes right before Rosh Hashanah. What's that all about? What's that all about? This is what it's about. We have, before Rosh Hashanah, before we can start doing tshuva, the most basic first step of tshuva is Hakar Satov. Hakar Satov means recognizing Hakarish Baruch who is the Melech. Hashem is the king. What does that mean? He's the king. He has given us everything. That's what a melech means. A melech is completely in charge. He's completely supporting his nation. That hakara, that base recognition that Hashem is the melech, that he gives us everything, that starts us off on the process of tshuva. We can't do tshuva if we don't recognize what someone is doing. Imagine you go to your parents who do everything for you. And you go and you say, you go up to them and you ask for something. You ask for, but you've never once said thank you your whole life to your parents. It's not once, but now you're like, oh, I need the car again. Can I have a car? Or can I have a car? You know, can I have some money? I need to, but you've never ever, you've never recognized that they're the source of all this goodness for you. What are you doing? How can we ask for a new year from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? How can we come to HaKadosh Baruch Hu with all of our tefillahs for everything that we want without recognizing first everything that he's done for us? That's HaKadosh Satov. That's Mikra Bikurim. And on, again, on the flip side, that's the Tochach. When we don't do it, we need to get rid of that. We need to tichle shana v'kil We need to get away from that failure of HaKadosh Satov first. And then we can come to the tshuva of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. This is why, by the way, Rosh Hashanah comes before Yom Kippur. The famous question, why does, if Yom Adin, shouldn't we do Vidui first? Shouldn't we have Yom Kippur and then have Yom Adin? But we first need to recognize that Hashem is the Melech. We're makir that. We recognize that. Once we recognize that on Rosh Hashanah, then we can go and start doing the Vidui and mending our ways and asking for things, but it all has to start with Akar Satov. I think that this might be the Yisod that the Gemara in, the, sorry, not the Gemara, the Slichas is telling us as well. That we start with Hashem Atzdaka, and then we say Shomei Tfila. We first start with all the unbelievable things that Gadosh Baruch Hu did for us. That's what we start with. That has to be the basis. Everything that Hashem does is amazing. It's wondrous. We have to go and thank you. That has to be the out. We can't even begin the process of asking for Slicha without first having the Hakara, the recognition of who we're talking to, and then we can begin the process of doing tshuva. But it all begins with a profound 
hakara satov, a recognition of all the good that we receive all the time. I heard someone point out, you know, in a lot of the shmuzin, they point out what has happened since last Rosh Hashanah. So they'll say all the bad things. There's a war in the Ukraine, and there's this one, and Rechaim Kanievsky was nifter, and this one was nifter. All the bad things that have happened last year, which was nigzar last year. And it's true. It's true. When we say on the Sanatok every Shalom is Milchama, so, you know, that was nigzar last Rosh Hashanah, what should happen in the Ukraine, etc. But aside from that, there's also billions of people, of human beings, who received life last Rosh Hashanah. All of us received that bracha last Rosh Hashanah to have life, new life, life that continued, that those billions of, of creatures, of human beings who received that gzeira of chayim last Rosh Hashanah, that also happens on Rosh Hashanah. And we need to focus on that as well. Be makir tov, recognize everything that we've received this past year and throughout our lives. And only then can we properly put the proper perspective and Hashem is the Melech. That's what we're doing in L'cha Hashem Atzdaka, the beginning of the Slichas. So a practical suggestion, just to wrap things up, a practical suggestion for this week. We just started saying Slichas. We have a whole week this year, the way the calendar fell out, a whole week of Slichas before Rosh Hashanah. Maybe this year, don't just skip ahead to the Yud Gimel Midas. First of all, get to Shul on time, because you get to, you're like, ah, I have a few extra minutes. They're just saying that beginning part anyway. No, get to Shul on time, even for Ashrei, Kaddish. Then this, look at the words. Try tomorrow when you guys say Slichas or tonight, and how you guys do it at night or in the morning. Look at those words. Look at those words of praise, of thanks, of, the, of, of what HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us. That'll totally put us in a, in a different mindset, in a mindset that allows us to be makir, that Hashem is truly the Melech. And then we can begin the process. I think if we try to do that every day this week, Till Rosh Hashanah, I think when we when we arrive on Judgment Day, the Yom Adin, we'll be in a very very different place than even where we are today. We'll be in a place of really truly recognizing everything that we've received, the tremendous bracha, and then of course what that demands of us. Bez Hashem, we should take that to heart and use this week as real preparation for the Yom Adin and Shavuksiva Hasima Tova to all of us. Hashem should bench us with a good gebenched yard to you, to your families, to all of Kali Israel.